Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I had a crazy game last ca last cast, and I've got a crazy game to come this cast, but a totally different game than we had before. However, before we jump into that, I have actually gotten all of my settings hammered out. I am going to do the live cast this Saturday that I talked about in the last cast. What we're going to do is at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, that would be roughly midnight, in Europe if you're over there in the UK or whatever it's gonna be uh, midnight to one o'clock and then if you're anywhere in the United States it's gonna be between uh, 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Um, we're just going to interact we're gonna get the community together and hopefully have an awesome Q&A session we're gonna watch a couple of games we're gonna talk about random stuff you can ask me about anything in my personal life. You can ask me about game strategies. You can ask me about anything to do with Supreme Commander, the FAF client, whatever you are curious about. And I will answer your questions and talk to you guys. I may or may not jump into voice chat with people. It may just be me. But regardless, we're going to have a good time and hopefully you will be there to join me for that. And that is going to be on my YouTube channel. I've streamed some to Twitch. My Twitch channel is the same as a YouTube channel, uh, Twitch slash uh, Brinko Insanity. But if you have not seen me over there, here's a chance for you to see what we do in the live cast with Forged Alliance. All right, promo out of the way. Let's go ahead and jump into this cast. Now, admittedly, this is an awful looking map. I don't know who made it. I honestly don't care who made it. What all it is is a free for all map where every player has eight mass extractors, there's two in between each player to fight over, and yes, Fun FFA is a free-for-all map. Now, if you were expecting some stupidity, I doubt there will be much of that here, or maybe some stupidity in Epic Fails, I don't know, but this is an extremely, extremely high-ranked game. We've got This You Wish, who is 1,700. Now we've got Galactic Fear over here, he was Cybern, Galactic Fear is Cybern, that is a 2700 player, currently the highest rated uh, globally ranked player. Blackheart, a king among, I was about to say peasants, but I don't want to call anybody on FAF peasants, that is terrible. Blackheart, the infamous, <laughs> has Aeon. And then over here we've got Ajax, I have not seen Ajax in a while, he is playing Seraphim, he has probably been playing, I just haven't seen him. And then Nepom, and he is taking UEF. That king comment is going to come back to bite me, because Blackheart is going to watch this cast, and he's going to rub that in my face. That is what I get for monologuing to a great degree without thinking very far in advance of my wording. Now, as to the map itself, I've not played on this map, but I could look at it right now and tell you that there is a ton of reclaim. And I mean a literal ton. This boulder, well, in relation to the relative size of the redundancy in that description of an ACU, um, that boulder is probably in the thousands of tons. But regardless, there's a lot of mass in it. So that is going to give these players the ability to tech up an extra mass extractor, do pretty much anything they want to do to get whatever they want online. And you can see this you wish to spamming power. Looks like he's going second air. We've got second air for Napalm. We've got Ajax going for second air. It seems like that's a running theme right here. Blackheart has not queued an air factory, but he does have the P-Gens for adjacency for an air factory. And then Galactic Fear also bowing out of the air factory everybody is grabbing their hydros as quickly as they can to get that power online and start a reclaim and you can see most of these guys have got 900 reclaim 500 600 700 all these guys are already dipping into the mass and most of them look like they have beautifully balanced ecos which you would expect of players in this rank range the only one under 2k is ah no Napalm is 1900 and this you wish is 1700. So, a couple under 2k, but the majority of these are uh, 2k and up. Now, as to strategies, I have no idea what these guys are going to pursue. I don't even know if the teams are unlocked. They are apparently locked down, and none of these guys appear to be obviously working together, unless there was an agreement in the chat that slipped me by as I was talking. And I don't think there is. No, no. 
previous plans a location given away here. But this will get interesting. All right. Maybe there won't be too much diplomacy. I prefer bullets to diplomacy, but you never know what you're going to get in a game of Supcom. So we have our first engagement here. We've got a hunter, and I accidentally went to plus four instead of back to zero. We've got a hunter over there, and then we've got engineer going to wall off the neck here. I'm trying to decide. You could go navy on this map, but it's a gamble. If you go navy inside the ring, then your navy is useless outside the ring. And if you go navy outside the ring, it's useless inside. So you could feasibly lose navy even if you had even production because one guy's out and one guy's in. So, yeah, you need to keep your scouting information up to date so you know what your opponents are doing because if you don't, you're going to die. Got Radar going down. Blackheart already tackling the T2 upgrade on his ACU. I imagine Com drops. Well, it depends on how aggressively you get your upgrades. Com drops could either be totally devastating or an epic fail because your ACU, the ACU of your opponent, is pretty much guaranteed to be within firing distance of your ACU when you land. So you better make dang sure that you got a gun upgrade under your belt and you better have an ACU that's stronger than his ACU. Ajax is going for the extra mass extractor upgrades as opposed to T2. Looks like he's going to nail down his fourth there. Actually, Blackheart already has four. Wow. Okay. So already off to a blazing start. Galactic Fear about to tip over his fourth one, and he is also getting a T2 engineer. And here comes the handy dandy engineer. The fearsome unit of progression advancing across the map, capturing everything in its wake and reclaiming what it cannot capture. And we've got a lonely hunter managing to take down the engineer just before the last wall segment was placed. And he is going to be able to kill that mass extractor with the help of the Medusa. I'm here on the northern side. Had a little bit of a reclaim war and a tiny bit of a battle, but it looks like Napalm has won that rather decisively. And both of these players have Navy going down. So we're going to see a naval engagement after all, and it has been decided by the group vote that it is going to be inside. However, Galactic Fear is going to buck the trend with his Navy outside. However, he is Cybran which means that his Salems can walk across the neck of land here, so he is free to build his naval factory on whichever side he very well pleases. But you know what? That's not good enough. He's going to do it on both. Why? I don't know. Possibly for frigate and or sub-spam on the inside so that he can make sure that he doesn't get wrecked by a handful of units in here. And then he will have his mainline production on the outside, which is actually brilliant because then his factory is well out of the way unless a long-range unit like a cruiser comes out. It can't really touch his T2 factory out here and kill off his production. A little bit of a run by by tanks. That was kind of a waste, honestly. Napalm, I don't know what you were thinking there, but all you did was feed him some reclaim. I'm sure he's not complaining, but I can't imagine why you would possibly want to do that. Napalm finishing off his mass extractor upgrades over here. Looks like as far as eco goes, Napalm is at the top of the charts at 49, and he's about to tip up even higher. I spy a drop. Where that drop is headed, we will have to wait and find out. So we've got Blackheart down here, already got a T2 P Gen, and he's got all T2 mechs except for that one which puts him right up there next to Napalm, just about. Napalm is going to edge ahead once again with these mass extractor upgrades that keep popping up. I'm finally going to have to give it in Yawn. I've been fighting that Yawn for like five minutes, and it finally won. All right, so the drop is back here. That is probably going to be surprise, Navy, right in the back of this guy over here. That is an awful awful realization when you see navy that's coming in and you have absolutely no means to stop it and it's just going to start wrecking your base additionally i think nepal might be doing this because this is well out of standard radar range for galactic fear and he probably knows that galactic fear is building this you can see the swarms of scouts everywhere this is the trademark 
of the higher ranked players. They want their intel and they want it now, dang it. So they're going to have scouts out and about and scouting everywhere that they can possibly ram those scouts through so that they know exactly what's going on as much as they possibly can. So I have no doubt that Napalm knows the Galactic Fear has a factory out here. He may not, actually. Wow, I just proved myself wrong. <laughs> Fail. There's the scout. So this is actually going on. This is the naval counter to this without even knowing that he's building it. Well done, sir. Well done. Blackheart has decided to go outside as well, but he is Aeon. So that may be problematic. Is that attack launch? I see. Yes, it is. Tack launcher ahoy. That's going to nail one mass extractor. We got another missile coming in, but there's going to be TMD. Question is, can the buzzkill knock it down? Buzzkill is infamously bad, but I think it can knock down an Aeon missile without much trouble. Oh, no, that's his cyber. What was I thinking? There's the split. Not quite going to take down the mass extractor, but it is damaged. So any damage you do to those, you have to heal up before you can upgrade the mass extractor if you're going to assist it. So... It is damage to the eco, regardless of whether or not it actually killed it. There's another attack launch. Looks like he's going for the T2 factory now. This is dangerous territory. A couple of solid tacks landed, or even if he keeps landing tacks but doesn't actually destroy it. Oh, that was a hard hit to take right there. Um, if he can keep Galactic Fear repairing the naval factory instead of actually building units with it, it's going to really stall him out. There's a denial right there. A handy dandy Cerberus turret is going to knock away all those T1 units. Looks like we have some T1 bombers headed around the outside. That's what killed all that build power is a T1 bomber. Galactic Fear killing that stuff off, but he's still going to lose an engineer thanks to the fall damage of that bomber. Well done. That was a kamikaze if I ever did see one. Blackheart could potentially have an issue if any serious navy comes to be on the inside because his destroyers let's look at the range here there we go destroyers can only reach so far so units can stand off of the mainland out here and not get hit by the exodus Salem is going to head north. Looks like he's going to go for a little bit of bombardment. The land masses are so tiny on these that pretty much all the naval units can reach the entire land mass. I'm pretty sure even the UEF and Seraphim destroyers can. So these destroyers are probably going to end up deciding the game. I think Navy is going to be the key here. We got T2 outside. Let's take a look at the flatness of this. Yeah, Seraphim Destroyers can kill that no problemo. It's like a bunch of pancakes lying out in the middle of the ocean. Yes, they would be terribly soggy, but they are flat. I guess they did get wet. They have some kind of green mold growing on them. Yeah, it's kind of disgusting. I think those are well past the expiration date. Ajax control king his T2 power because he probably has and definitely has Rask. You can see he has the double backpack right there. That is going to give him a whopping total of 3.2k power income. That means he has single Rask, my bad. And 880 mass income, which puts him hand over fist above any of these guys. That's going to be a 23, 24 mass point advantage over Blackheart, who is the next highest. It looks like This You Wished is going to have some serious problems on his hand if he doesn't take care of this. Ah, there's the tack launch. It's going to kill the destroyer. Well done. That is one way to solve your problem. Galactic Fear only had one destroyer, and now he has problems of his own because, um, I keep forgetting their names. Blackheart has two destroyers, which he is focus firing on Galactic Fear. Galactic Fear is going to be one of the strong players. I would say these two down here are the most dangerous. If it was up to my personal little humble opinion. And uh, if these guys duke it out and one of them kills the other, but this one has expended all of his resources, or this one, whichever one kills the other, then these three guys are going to have a chance to snipe the other one off, and then the game is betwixt the three of them. Still a building frigates. 
kind of a waste of a T2 factory, but uh, not much else you can do when your opponent has started firing TAC missiles at you. We got a zapper going up there, but one zapper can't stop a Cybran TAC launcher. Is that another TAC launcher? Yes, it is. Is that Commander TAC? Yes, it is. T2 ACU with the TAC launcher. That is a brutal, brutal weapon. Ajax is in the middle of an upgrade, and he doesn't have a T2 engineer. This is terrible. It's terrifying when your mass extractors start falling left and right, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, and there's the TAC defense, but he's already three mass extractors down, but you can see the vicious response time here. He's already got a T1 mass extractor in place immediately after it gets shot down, and there is number four. So four T2 mass extractors removed from his base. It looks like we're going to have a fifth. It is just outside the effective range of this tack defense. Let me uh, go over here and clicky clicky on Ajax. You can see it just barely was inside and there. Now he has two so they're killing them and no more problem with tack launchers but that is, uh, that is some serious hurt to take right there. Alright, looks like This You Wished probably has the... Yes, Torpedo Upgrade. I was about to say he might have Stealth as well, but I don't think that he does. So he's going to walk himself right up next to this Naval Factory and start wreaking havoc. The Torpedo Upgrade on the Cybern ACU is actually extremely good. It does well over 200 DPS on immense amounts of range. And yeah, once he gets right up in your base, that's pretty much it. You're not going to be able to build T2 units fast enough to kill him. He has the engineering suite. T2 engineering, he'll be able to reclaim anything that gets in his way. And just casually stand there and torp everything to death. So, so sad. Galactic Fear. Complaining that he can't eco whore when everyone is attacking him. Well, no, duh. That would be why everyone is attacking you, because you are an absolute monster of an eco whore, and if anybody gives you a chance, you're going to tech up to 200 mass income and then roll them over with experimentals. So, gotta take care of that problem before it becomes a serious issue. We've got two destroyers hammering down on Napalm's base and then a third incoming from another player. That is a disadvantage to a round map with even spacing. You can get double teamed very easily. Galactic Fear trying to grab an upgrade, but that is not... Oh, no. No. Don't do that. He's gonna build energy storage next to Galactic Fear and try to control it with Galactic Fear in range. If he builds point defense, it's gonna fire at the energy storage, and those do 1k damage apiece. The control K does not do damage, I guess. Ah, yes, I do recall that was removed in the not the last balance patch, but before. Um, the if you control K energy storage, it no longer does damage, but it still does 1,000 damage if if the opponent destroys it. So you can technically still spam up a ton of T1 energy storage around all of the important things and then when the point defense has nothing else to shoot at, it will shoot at the energy storage and blow it up. So it is kind of an option but not the um, basically planting dynamite in your opponent's base that it once was. Alright, we got a cruiser out here. It's gonna start taking a little bit of fire from that attack launcher but it will be able to defend itself somewhat since it does have TMD and it's going to continue on its merry way circling around the base and killing things with its own tack launcher. Looks like on the southern side we're going to clear out these mass extractors with a destroyer. Looking like 100% destroyers for Ajax, which is actually not a bad plan at all because the Seraphim destroyers are going to be incredibly useful. Typically you can't build 100% destroyers because you have to have cruisers to attack the landmass but in this case, he can reach the entire landmass with his destroyers, so why not just build them? He's going to be able to zap off all of these mass extractors. It is revenge for the ones that he lost, and he's actually already rebuilt all of those, and he's going for his first T3 mass extractor, and he's about halfway there already. So Ajax is still king of the income. Napalm is very, very sad. 26 mass per tick, which is basically nothing. This You Wished has got a veterancy in addition to his T2 build suite. 
is going to get on the land, and he sent a rhino this way, actually. Kind of odd just to have one rhino. Got additional rhinos headed in. These guys, of course, are amphibious, but they go under the water instead of hovering on top of it like some of the other factions units do. They pop out of the water. Surprise! We showed up at the party and nobody's prepared and there's no food for them and they get angry and trash the place. Looks like these destroyers have moved back over. He's got four of them. Why doesn't he close in and kill off some of this stuff? This you wished is not looking extremely healthy and he's kind of pinned down by some frigates, but he does have his own destroyer out here. Hopefully that can help him out. He will make it to the water, I think. There's a t couple of T1 subs out here, but with his torp launcher, he can make short work of those. And then a bomber coming out to take care of five engineers in one pass. Then it dies, but that is well worth the loss. Once again, the Kamikaze Bomber has won the day. And those destroyers are somehow still managing to hit the terrain on top of a pancake. That's how bad the beam weapons are. Sometimes they just decide that they want to nosedive. Although, technically, a beam weapon can't nosedive because that would require a change in trajectory. But maybe there's a prism in the way. Who knows? Atmospheric conditions, y'all. Or aliens. Which is ironic because they are aliens. Okay, Galactic Fear trying to block in this you wished. He is going to continue shooting Galactic Fear in the face, but he's got to get to the water somehow because there's just too much fire to stay above. He's, yep, there he is. Actually, the landmass falls off very quickly right here. That's pretty cool. You take like 10 steps and your head's underwater. Very nice for extremely quick getaways. As of yet, nobody going for T3 Navy, which in my opinion would be kind of dumb because everything on the match map can be reached with T2. So going for T3 is kind of overkill and also costs you mass for your T3 factory, which could be put into more T2 units and winning. This you wished, why do you keep coming out of the water? You are gonna die and it's all your fault. No! He's so close! 200 health! 200 health! He was snagged on his rhino. 400 health! Stay in the freaking water! Oh! Oh! Galactic Fear has a torp upgrade. No! That's why! It took me long enough to realize. <laughs> if he goes under the water, he gets torped to death, and if he comes above the water, he gets frigated to death. Well, there was also some uh, T1 point defense over there, but you know, he's dead and that's all that matters. So, first player down at 19 minutes on the nose. Was that? Don't tell me. That was a tack launcher that was already in the air. Man, if Galactic Fear had not moved, that would have been so freaking hilarious. If he would have stayed put instead of moving his ACU, the after death TML from this you wished would have killed him and it would have been a mutual. That is amazing. All right, Blackheart, looks like he's going for some more teching. He is up to 128 income. Ajax is still ahead though with 149 and he has amassed quite the respectable navy here of Seraphim destroyers. It's, he's got, let's see, three, six, seven, and then we've got two, four, five over here. But there's Hover. Hover is a bad thing. So Adric still does not have enough to wreck Blackheart, but he is very close. And Napalm getting back online somewhat. He is sitting at 32 mass per tick, Galactic Fear at 9. We have a new lowest player. In fact, Galactic Fear has been removed to the point that uh, he is now having his base reclaimed. If I were him, I would run up here and try to get a new base because apparently being this close to black card is not good for your health. What is this? Tack launches from Napalm. Napalm is going to walk up here and wreck what little build power Galactic Fear has left. Everyone's picking on Galactic Fear. He's going to get removed from this game. Let's check our reclaim numbers here. We got 6k from Ajax. We got 9k for Blackheart. Napalm 13.6, which is why he is still relatively in the game despite losing almost all of his mexes. 
And then Galactic Fear at 3k. Holy cow, I didn't expect that. Galactic Fear, why you no reclaim? He's got some engineers following him. I'm sure he's going to reclaim all of this stuff. And he's going to throw down some land factories up here with his ACU and build engineers and build mass extractors and all of those other pretty shiny things that give you the resources to kill people. And that's basically your goal in life. He still has this one T2 mass extractor, which it appears that Blackheart has not noticed yet. He threw down all of his build orders. And yeah, there's a mass extractor in the way right there. So hopefully he can hang on to that for just a little bit longer, just long enough for him to get established up here on the north side. Blackheart shifting to a bit more hover. He's got some hover shields out now. He's got this T2 factory rolling him out. That's going to give him a bit of an advantage over the Seraphim Navy at this point because the Seraphim Navy has the strong torps and the direct fire beam weapons, which shields are pretty great at negating both of those. There's no area of effect to damage multiple shields at once. They, the damage transfer still damages multiple shields at once, but not to the extent that an area of effect weapon would. And, uh, yes, yeah, so that's going to give this Navy an even more decisive advantage. But here comes the beam weapons. As long as Ajax keeps microing, you're going to see clean misses in a lot of these cases. Just confusing the ever-living hell out of the Aeon guns. The Aeon destroyers are objectively stronger in DPS, in health, in torps, and in defenses. The problem is... If you micro your navy well, they can't hit the broad side of a barn. But so far, we've got one destroyer lost, two destroyers lost for Blackheart, and only one for Ajax. Ajax needs to keep moving. We've got three down. Looks like this has a chance. The hover's moving in. There's more shields coming up from the back, trying to get in and swing this fight the other direction. But I think Ajax, with that little bit of extra micro, and dodging out those destroyer shots, I think he's actually going to be able to get this. If nothing else, he can sink and run away from the hover spam. I wouldn't at this point, because he still has plenty of health on a lot of those destroyers, and he needs to kill this stuff anyway. But it does look like he is okay. He's got about 10 destroyers to 5. For Blackheart and just about all of the hover is dead so I think that is going to be GG Navy wise Ajax is going to own the seas free to traverse them as he will Ajax does have both resource allocation upgrades he's relying exclusively on RAS for his power income and he does have four T3 mass extractors for a grand total of 176 income the problem is Blackheart's got this other island, and that is going to give him a eco boost like none other. He's already up to 273 mass per tick, dumping all of his resources into these T3 mass extractor upgrades. Now, that's going to allow him to bring a lot of production online later as long as he doesn't get killed off by Navy. The disadvantage to sinking your resources into mass extractor upgrades is, you guessed it, you don't have as many combat units. But at this point, I think Blackheart can just straight up outproduce Ajax, which is going to be incredibly annoying for him. So we've got more hover spam coming online, throwing down those T2 HQs. Not HQs, support factories. I was thinking that they weren't HQs, and I was going to say that they weren't HQs, and I said the exact opposite. Fail. Anyway, that's going to give him plenty of blazes and shields to mix in with his navy, which is going to be extremely helpful in killing off Ajax's ever-annoying units. I'm friggin' harassing the mid right here. Just to run back over that T1 mobile artillery. It's gonna start landing hits on it. It looks like Ajax is gonna have more of a problem though. Because while he is doing extremely well on the southern front, we have a whopping five destroyers and a whole bunch of T1 subs descending upon his production. So he's gonna start losing engineers left and right. And if he wants to save his production, nope withdrawal why is there a withdrawal I do not understand this maybe he is letting Ajax damage Blackheart as much as he possibly can that's the only explanation that I can come up with for this because at this exact moment 
Napalm could easily run over the production of Ajax. Galactic Fear actually doing pretty well getting his base back online. He's almost back up to Napalm's level already. I'm sure he's upped his reclaim. 7,600. Blackheart's got 19k. Ajax got 12k. And then 18k for Napalm. Still behind, Galactic Fear. I would have expected better of you, but it is what it is. You've got some land factories going down here. Anytime you lose production, that's a bad thing when you're engaged in a fight with high ecos. Because ecos being even, it's going to be the guy with more build power that wins the game. And at the moment, Blackheart has both more eco by a very slim margin and also more build power. So if he loses build power, it is actually as critical as losing mass at this point in the game. He's got to be able to get those units out on the field ASAP. He also needs to reclaim, because there's a whole bunch of destroyer wrecks out here. If he can get his hands on those, he'll be able to run over Ajax very quickly because he's already got a good amount of destroyers back online. Ajax is going to run to the north. He's got to do something about this because his, uh, yeah, you can see what's happening to his build power. His build power is going out in a blaze of glory here. It's actually a beautiful sight. I do love Supreme Commander's looks. It is a beautiful game. You would never guess that this game is seven years old. It's ancient in technology terms, but it is still a damn good looking game. All right, Napalm is going to move back ever so slightly. Ajax is going to sit on top of his own build power. T1 subs coming in. Interesting trivia fact. T1 subs actually do win versus Seraphim Destroyers, mass for mass. Um, well, someone's going to deny me in the comments. Yes, the Destroyers do outrange them and you can kite away. But if you're doing a direct engagement directly on top of your build power, you're not going to want to give ground and kite. So yes, in a head-to-head -head slugfest, the T1 subs will win over the Seraphim Destroyers. Looks like Galactic Fear is trying to get some navy. Not any extremely good navy, but he does have some frigates to throw around if push comes to shove. And it looks like Coopers are coming out over here. Whole lot of Coopers. Not many destroyers going on in the north. Napalm finally starting his T3 mass extractor upgrades. There's his first one. It's going to give him 93 mass per tick income as opposed to 50 for Galactic Fear. Blackheart has pulled a significant lead over Ajax. Ajax pulled ahead again momentarily, but Blackheart with the second base fig... Uh, that's all, folks. With the second base teching up to T2 on all its mass extractors and starting to cap those off, he's now pushing up towards the 300 mark, whereas Ajax has pretty much hit his limit on this amount of mass extractors. He's going to have to get more reclaim either from building mass fabs or from reclaiming and pounding other people into the dirt from whence they were formed and then recycling that dirt into more units. Ajax... Building a T4. We have a Yathatha here. Yathatha chicken bot. Whatever you call the dang thing. Some people call them YOLOs. I don't entirely argue with that. Because you only live once kind of applies to the lightning storm in the most ironic sense. But yeah. He is building a T4 direct fire experimental. Which I am 100% positive he plans on marching directly into this base. Blackheart is building some shields right here at the front. I don't think that he actually has enough to stop the chicken bot. All of these destroyers can wade into this fight. The Athotha can fire from the shore. And between the navy and the chicken, it should be able to make short work of any of the direct fire units in this group. And then the chicken is going to be free to run over this base. I'm interested to see what Blackheart is going to do about this. We got navy rounding around the left side. Napalm is going to wipe out Galactic Fears navy. I think those are the same T1 subs from the beginning of the game. That is actually kind of funny. Chicken is going to bypass the Navy completely. It's going to walk to this side and come in from the water. Blackheart already complaining about it, and he's running into the water. 
in the back of his base, prepping for the moment when his base is no more. Because Chicken! Chicken's going to cross over. I was about to say it's going to cross the road, but it's actually skipping the road. Chicken used the bypass. Navy's going to camp out over here. I hope he kills all of that base. And the chicken has made landfall. Immediately wiping out the radar. And the shields are going to start dropping like flies. The chicken's not really firing at anything. I'm not sure why. There it goes. Blackheart is in a serious power stall at the moment. His hover is invading Ajax's base. Oh, Ajax is nearly dead. That's what the destroyers were focus firing. He's losing all of his navy due to the fact that he's focus firing the ACU, but at this point I think that really is the only chance that he has. That is a torrent firing missiles over there. I was wondering what that was. 4,000 health. Oh! That was very nearly a direct connect from two destroyers. And that chicken's just going to kill everything. Hey, look! Veterancy! I'm waiting for the cannon hit. Oh, come on. Shoot at the middle of the engineer swarm. I want to see this. Boom! And there it is! <laughs> All the engineers! All of them! Nom, 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 nom. 152 kills on that thing already. Alright, the hover is withdrawing ever so slightly, though I'm not sure why. I'm going to focus fire the T3 power generator with the blazes that he is leaving behind. Ah, he's getting navy in his base. That's why he's withdrawing. Herp -erp. And the torrent is actually doing a decent job of connecting some shots with the Seathoth. That's a lot of damage to take. He needs to move out of the way of that. We got the subs closing on Blackheart. Unfortunately, Blackheart... <clears throat> does not have any torpedo units in his navy at all and he no longer has a t2 factory to build destroyers so basically he's just gonna have to hope that his shields can take the brunt of those torps which they are for the moment and he's gonna have to get back out on land which means engaging the athatha he's got the battleship on the athatha but uh, it is gonna take a bit more than a single battleship to kill that chicken especially in the short time frame that he has to live or he can just camp under all his mobile shields. Infinite mobile shields! Which are going to rapidly go down because of damage transfer. Blackheart, I think you're dead. I'm not... I, I'm not really seeing a way that you get out of this alive. I mean, yes, you have a huge number of mobile shields, but eventually they will go down. And what's even funnier about this whole mess... Oh, there we go, chicken. Chicken incoming to wipe out all the shield generators. <clears throat> that is going to solve the problem. The really funny thing about this is this torrent is still hammering away at Ajax's base. It's actually caused a bit of damage since the tanks tore through it. Ajax is still hiding in the water, building yet another chicken because he still has 222 mass income as opposed to Black's Hearts 111. That is hysterical. 111 versus 222, and of course they change. Why you no stay the same? It was perfect, just like it was. It was a completely awesome double the income number. I think I officially lost my voice this cast. I'm trying to get it back. I'm trying to get a rest. I need to get a drink. I know it's rude to let everyone hear me sip on a straw, but maybe you won't hear it. You gotta do what you gotta do. And I do the do. Alright. Galactic Fear dropping an upgrade. I'm not entirely sure what it is. It can't be teleport because he still has resource allocation on his ACU. Could be the Mazer. I can't decide. That is a gun upgrade, I think, maybe? It's hard to tell what's glowing. That is a gun upgrade. Probably T3 Engineering Suite, if I had to guess. Might be looking to build a Monkey Lord. There's the second chicken. He's still got the first one alive, which is kind of impressive. So he's got this chicken over here with a whopping four veterancy on 235 kills. And then he's about to add a fresh face to his army. Actually, no. He's going to stand as a guardian over his base. Use that anti-air, bro. 
knock down those scouts. I like the Athatha because it does a fairly decent job of defending itself against Mercies. I'm always happy with T4s to defend themselves against Mercies because Mercies really tick me off when they kill my experimental units. When you have an experimental unit in the back of their base with no support, the quickest way to kill it is with Mercies. And there goes Blackheart. I knew that was coming eventually, I just wasn't sure when because he had no more support units and yeah, no torpedo units, nothing. So. Congrats to Napalm on killing off Blackheart, but now he has Ajax to deal with, which may actually be worse because Ajax has two chickens and a whole lot of reclaim, which he can use to build a third. Or a T4 bomber. I would love to see a T4 bomber. I think a T4 bomber would be hysterical because at the moment there's no shields over here. You could basically take out the entire island with one bomb. And I spy a summit and another summit on the way. The epic UEF battleship with these immense cannons. UEF has a fetish for big guns. That's all I got to say. Those guns, I think if we were talking realistic physics here, I think those guns would actually topple the boat. Thing's not even rocking in the water. Boat, you would be upside down if all three of those guns fired at the same time. Capsize. That's the word I was looking for. Capsize. Go for some nautical terminology here. Ithatha is heading down south, going to keep this expansion clear, not let anyone else claim it. And the other is headed north. Good dealio, my good sir. And Napalm has absolutely nothing to stop that with. So I think we are about to witness the close of this game. Seraphim Destroyers tearing into these UEF Destroyers. Chase them away. There is so much reclaim out here. Holy cow. Galactic Fear is going to try to harm this summit. And I do mean that literally in both senses. I think he still has the torpedo upgrade, if I'm not totally mistaken. <laughs> that he does. I would find it absolutely hysterical. I don't think I've ever seen a Cybern ACU kill a T3 naval unit with its torp launcher. That would be a brilliant engagement to watch. Actually, it would be horrifically boring because basically it would just be the ACU sitting there launching torps at a defenseless unit, but you get my drift. The thought of it would be epic. So now we have three summits versus the Yathatha, which actually favors the Yathatha because micro. The summits can't hit a unit that's dodging around. There's the engineer kills. We're up to 265 already on this chicken. Wait, is that the... Ah, that is the vetted one. That was five vets. This is a five vet Yathatha, a hundred and a hundred thousand five hundred health. Just over the one hundred thousand mark, nailing Napalm in the rear as he retreats. And that is game. Napalm is down. It is now Ajax versus Galactic Fear. And you know what? Galactic Fear is a good player. He's got Ajax by 600 rank. But right now, he's looking at a 2x. Yes. Ajax has literally twice the eco as Galactic Fear does. Well, not exactly. He's a few off, but basically double. And uh, Ajax has two chickens, a large navy, and a huge infrastructure with which to build more things. He's about to have a third chicken. So I don't think there's anything that Galactic Fear can do at this point. He is building a uh, Monkey Lord, which is going up rather quickly, but he's going to have two Yuthothas on his base. If he micros that Monkey Lord extremely well, the Monkey Lord can easily dispatch one Yuthotha. I doubt it will be that lucky versus two Yuthothas, especially considering the Lightning Storm. And then if he does manage to kill the two Yuthothas, there is a third one coming in, and also this one's vetted. I did not think about that to begin with. It has extremely high regen and 72,000 health already in the bank. Galactic Fear is running away as quickly as he can, but unfortunately there's a whole bunch of destroyers over here which are getting hammered by these harms. Harms are probably going to go down, but not before killing most of the destroyers, I think. 
Destroyers are focus firing Galactic Fear. You thought this crossing over. If he ground fires on top of Galactic Fear, he can probably actually damage that ACU with the balls of death. And Galactic Fear not looking too healthy. I think that this is game. Ajax reigns supreme. The king from the beginning of the game has been dethroned. And that, my friends, is how a free-for-all in the top echelon falls out. That was the best players that Forged Alliance Forever has to offer, or a few of them anyway, and I believe that Galactic Fear met his end on the heel of Eothotha. I think the step is what killed him. Alrighty guys, that's going to wrap up this game. Quite the epic one, if I do say so myself. Multiple D4s, even if they were from one person. A whole bunch of naval engagements and a bit of conniving as units run all the way around the map to stab people in the back. And uh, yeah, a lot of action going on there. Hopefully I caught 90% of it or better. I'm not going to go redo any cams because I think it did a pretty good job of capturing that game. So hopefully you enjoyed it immensely. Now... This is going to upload tonight. You're probably going to see this in the morning. Hopefully you get my announcement for the live stream. I'm going to go ahead and put a notification on my channel for the live screen stream as well. I really hope that you guys will tune in for that. I'm really looking forward to doing this for you guys. I know there's a lot of people that talk to me and I answer all of the comments as best as I can when they're directed at me. If you have any questions, write them down, think them up. If you aren't going to make it for the live cast, that is going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time tomorrow, once again. Um, if you aren't going to make it, just go ahead and leave a comment on this video if you want me to talk about something. Um, I will be looking at the comments for this video since it is my most current one to pull things to talk about in the cast. So hopefully you'll join me there. If not, I will read your stuff. Alrighty guys, that's going to wrap it up for me and this game. I will catch you tomorrow. Thanks as always for watching.